I'm sure you've probably heard the term Doppler before, but did you know the principles that we use in our weather radar today was developed more than 150 years ago by an Austrian physicist named Christian Doppler. He found that the occurrence produced by a moving source of waves in which there is an obvious shift upward in the frequency for observers towards whom the source is approaching and an obvious shift downward in the frequency for people for whom the source is moving away. Okay, let's simplify the Doppler effect for you. Think of a car on a road honking its horn. While the car is traveling towards you, you can hear the high-pitched sound of the horn. But suddenly after it passes by, the pitch lowers and drops. Now this is a perfect example of the Doppler effect, and this is how it's used in weather radar. The radar sends out a pulse of energy, which then reflects off an object, such as a raindrop. Now some of the energy reflects away into the air, but the majority of it goes back to the radar, where it then calculates how far away the raindrop is, how intense the rain is, and which way the raindrop is moving in relation to the fixed radar site. Now that is where the Doppler effect comes in. We use the data sent from the most powerful radar in East Tennessee at the National Weather Service office in Morristown to our Storm Tracker 6 computer to show you the rain, sleet, and snow. But during severe weather situations, the wind speed and direction is what is the most important. If the wind in a small space is going away from the radar in one area and towards the radar right next to it, this can show that there's rotation within the storm, and that means there's a possibility that that storm could produce a tornado. Now, it can also show how strong winds are over a given length of a line of storms, and this can help determine whether the storm could produce what we call straight line winds. With Storm Tracker 6, we also have access to all the National Weather Service Doppler radars across the country, including Nashville, Northern Alabama, Southeast Kentucky, and Northern Georgia to give you the most complete storm coverage in East Tennessee.